just about a year ago in my inaugural speech, I announced my six-point economic plan that would help advance Montgomery County's economic competitiveness and better position our community for the future. Shortly afterwards, I also decided to restructure our economic development functions to better adopt to changing economic market conditions. My goal was to change how we can better attract and retain businesses and how we can better align businesses' needs with workforce development. Thanks to the hard work and support of a number of people and organizations, we have made great strides on these and several other major important initiatives. As county executive, I've always been proud of the county's ability to provide consistently high services to our diverse communities in spite of the serious economic conditions we faced. We did this while we also closed $3 billion in budgetary gaps over the last nine years. And just more recently, we closed an additional $54 million gap in our FY 2015 budget, all while protecting essential services. We have protected our AAA bond reading, which keeps our borrowing costs down to advance critical capital projects. But I want you to hear what Wall Street has said about Montgomery County. Keep in mind, this is a county of well over 1 million residents a county that is quite diverse, a county that is faced as a proximity to the federal government, federal closures, sequestrations, and a variety of other very difficult factors. Here's what Fitch said about Montgomery County. Montgomery County has a sophisticated management team that uses conservative budget and has established debt and reserve policies that have resulted in health reserves and liquidity levels. They added, Montgomery County continues to exist, exhibit a very impressive economic profile. Moody's said, the AAA bond rating reflects the county's sizable, strong, and diverse tax base, affluent demographics, and management debt burden. Moody's also said, the rating also incorporates the county's healthy reserve position which has grown in recent years as a result of the implementation of various new fiscal policies and a multi-year plan to restore the county's financial flexibility. They also noted that several large projects are on the way in the county that would add further to our tax base and job base, including substantially, a substantial amount of investment, $1.5 billion in building construction in FY 2015. Standard and Poor's said, and they also took this similar view, that the stable outlook reflects our view of Montgomery County's very strong local economy and its demonstrated resilience to economic pressure, due in large part to its very strong managed condition. While the bond rating is a good indicator of our economic health, it is not the only one. Let me reflect here on this bond rating because it is important. It is not something that I've done alone. It is not something that the executive branch has done alone. But it is something that our team, our partners working together have helped the county council. But more importantly, uh, the credit due to our outstanding economic team here in Montgomery County, uh, led by Tim Feinstein which is one of the nation's best public policy financial advisors and managers. Our Treasury Department, led by Joe Beach, Office of Managing Budget by Jennifer Hughes, and a host of other people. This is significant for a county of this size. Our economic health has grown in many ways. We have maintained an unemployment rate of 4%, lower than the state as a whole, and one of the lowest in any, of any jurisdiction in the entire state. But the pressure on us continues to increase. Our schools are growing by nearly 3,000 students every year. As a result of the U.S. Supreme Court ruling, the Wynn case will cost us at least $115 million future in, in, for past uh, 
taxpayers and probably 15 to 20 million dollars going forward. These reasons make it even more important to expand our tax base even further and to grow our economy and jobs to meet our community's need and protect our quality of life. So today, I am pleased to give you an update on our progress thus far. First, as you know, I propose to realign our economic development and workforce system placing more responsibility in the hands of the private sector. Thanks to the strong support from the community, the county council, and many others, we now have a new Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation with an 11-member board headed by Chair Bob Buchanan. We also have a new Workforce Development Board to set, to set policies for Montgomery County's workforce system headed by Mike Sullivan and a new nonprofit WorkSource Montgomery to implement the policies. That board will be headed by Donna Cooper of PEPCO. Second, our MOVE Build program to help small businesses fill office space has attracted 26 new businesses to the county and added 187 jobs, with a projection of 343 new jobs over the next few years. Collectively, these companies fill over 100,000 square feet of office space. That's essentially the entire space of the county office building. Third, MC Square, our program to foster the startup innovation culture with support from the county, has launched its first accelerator, Relevant Health. We've also started a venture mentoring services in partnership with, tech, with the Tech Council of Maryland. And we are now continuing our partnership much stronger with 1776, the leading startup incubator and seed funder to test and deploy technologies that serve the public needs. Later, you'll see a new video on the entrepreneurship called Choose Montgomery that features our successful entrepreneurs that are making the difference in our community and around the world. Four. We wanted to streamline our development processes. To that end, we hired Mike Smith as our new development ombudsman to help usher through the development project, many projects that many had claimed that were slow in the process. Under our new development permitting systems, I promised a 30-day initial review of electronically submitted plans. I'm here to announce today that we started it sooner than it expected, and we are now completing initial plans, both electronically and on paper, in 19 days. That's really significant. Also, as part of that process, I am unveiling today a new development database that would allow the public to see projects as they are proposed and moved through our system and get quick overview, including photographs and contact information as well. Fifth, I recognize that we needed to upgrade our attention and to look very carefully at our network infrastructure. So we created Ultra Montgomery to foster the growth of ultra-fast gigabyte networks. We've used public-private partnerships to connect business, academic, and federal institutions along major transportation corridors and smart growth communities through the new advanced network. We work with the private sector to deploy at our new, at a, the Silver Spring Innovation Center, a one gigabyte per second broadband without wires. This is a very big deal and more is promised. Finally, I remain committed to serving the future transportation needs of our country through a rapid transit system because much of what I've just described depends upon our ability to ensure that we have the transportation to the board. That is why I reconstituted our transportation task force to take a new look at the issue. I have received their recommendations and have directed our Department of Transportation to outline for me the plans of how we will start. And we will not start with an overall comprehensive plan from A to Z, but we will initiate in the very near future segments of this plan that would allow us to move forward. These initiatives are only a start because the nature of the work means a lot. 
plans and programs must continue to evolve to adapt to the change in market conditions and meet our community needs. But we are making progress, and we will continue to make progress with the help and the support of all of the people that have been such an integral part of this project. I'd like to introduce the other members of our <coughs> officer crowd with the, the, the new organization. Uh, our video screen star, Ola Sage, who many of you just saw, Robbie Brewer, and Sanjay Ray. And these are the new officers, along with me, for this bold new initiative that really sends a strong signal not just to the county but to the region about pro how proactive Montgomery is to work with this new economy that we have, to come up with new ways of reaching out, to, to develop those great assets, to do the partnering. Much like the business community that we all come from, there are many innovative ways that we think we can help bring to the county proce process. But like all good public-private partnerships, if we're successful, it's because we brought out the best in one another. So we look forward to the task. Uh, it's great to be able to get to work. The process was long, but now it's our, sh our turn to do our thing, and we very much appreciate the opportunity. It's a little daunting, but I think we're up to it. Thank Very you, sir. Good morning, but it may be afternoon. My name is Donna Cooper, and I am the president of PEPCO. I'm also the chair of WorkSource Montgomery, Inc. I am pleased to really be here on today, and I would really like to take the opportunity to thank our county executive, Mr. Mike Leggett, for his leadership in ensuring that the six-point plan for economic development included developing the skills as well as the abilities of the workforce to address industry's need for qualified talent. In both capacities, representing both business and as a member of WorkSource Montgomery, Inc. Board of Directors, I also served on the Workforce Steering Committee, which focused on strategies. That group really provided the structure through which a collaborative process took place. It included community leaders, it included community-based organizations, as well as business, as well as the Montgomery County government, coming together to develop recommendations that form the basis of the new, forced, new workforce development system. I truly appreciate, as well as the individuals in this room on today that serve on that board, the vision that the county executive the County Council. I would like to recognize Councilmember Nancy Florine for her leadership and support in really initiating this process as well. And the Workforce Board and other stakeholders represented on the steering committee. To date, we have taken a lot of action, but there is more to be done. <coughs> as the operating arm of the new Workforce Development Board, we have moved rapidly to create and elevate this structure through which we have a new mission of the workforce system. And I wanted to outline that mission. Number one, to meet the talent attraction, development, as well as retention needs of strategic industries. Meet the needs of both the underemployed as well as unemployed. And importantly, developing the career pathways that lead to sustainable wages and jobs and support a thriving economy. I also like to talk about creating careers. In the end, a transformed system of workforce development that is aligned to economic development will accomplish a robust system of talent development for all aligned to the future and current economic development priorities in the county. I wanted to touch on some of the actions that, we have, that have taken place to date. We have a robust executive search that is underway for a CEO. The County Council has passed the legislation to codify as well as support WorkSource Montgomery as the operating as well as convening arm for workforce development in the county. The board has been working with the county executive staff to incorporate the workforce strategic plan into the comprehensive economic development plan to ensure alignment. WorkSource Montgomery, as well as the Workforce Development Board, has also approved a set of measures to track the success of the new system 
these metrics are so very important from both an internal and an external and an accountability perspective. We are working deliberately in moving WSM, including the contracting process for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act funds, as well as fiscal operations. We have developed an MOU and MBDC to transition RX for employ employability to WSM. And we are continuing to identify alternative fund sources to diversify funding and programming to achieve our goals. I wanted to note that this is going to be a journey. It's not a sprint. A lot of committed individuals are at the table. It is the appropriate intersection and path forward to really move the economic development agenda of the county forward and to ensure that individuals in the county are having the opportunities to connect with those employment opportunities that are p being created. And more importantly, that they're getting the training in order to take on those new roles. So this new structure will ultimately and the mission affords us that opportunity to transform Montgomery County and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. I'd be remiss if I did not recognize also Mike Sullivan from Workforce Development as well. Thank you. Uh, this is really a big day uh, and frankly uh, these actions are game changers uh, for Montgomery County. Uh, the state of the Montgomery County economy has written, really risen to the top and is at the top of our list of priorities and these kinds of actions reflect our commitment uh, to keeping our economy strong and growing it uh, very successfully. Uh, I, I'd wanted, I just want to do a few shout outs. Uh, the, Ike uh, referred to some of the comments that the rating agencies have made about us. Uh, which supports our bond rating and establishes us as a national leader. And some of the things they pointed to as well, they've given a great nod of approval to the work we've all done on our master plans, uh, projecting and providing for future growth areas in the county, trying to be nimble, trying to find new ways to support our, our burgeoning high-tech and biohealth environment. I want to point to our chair of the planning board, Casey Anderson here, who's been a great supporter and a great leader in all that. I'd also want to recognize Rich Bendis from BioHealth Innovation, uh, a true uh, leader in being nimble, being creative, and finding new ways to support the entre entrepreneurship and innovation that makes us great. Um, Sharon Friedman has done a tremendous job in the workforce development effort. We really thank Sharon. And of course, uh, someone on county staff who has been through uh, many, many battles with us is Tom Street here. And I want to recognize him in particular because he's written a lot of the, helped us put together a lot of the legislation that, that nails this structure for us. So this is a really very exciting time. I know we're all thrilled about where we're going with this. It's a real statement of Montgomery County. Uh, so it's a very positive time for us. And I thank you, Ike. Uh, for making this happen this way. Uh, I was reading uh, a um, real estate analysis firm's discussion of the comparative uh, pros and cons of Montgomery County versus Northern Virginia, D.C. for uh, new uh, business locations. And one of the main points it made was that there are not, uh, at least in the view of this analysis, there were not very many sites available uh, in Montgomery County for a new large employment use to, to locate. And I know that's not true, but it's not good enough for us in government to say it's not true. We have to have the facts. And uh, the tool that you're going to see today allows us to show very uh, easily in real time where there are locations that are suitable for anybody who wants to come, come to the uh, county to expand or to start a business, to relocate a business, where they can be not only accommodated where there's physically space, but where there's actually a plan that's been approved or has been submitted is already uh, working its way through the approval process and, can, and uh, is available. So I think that that's going to be a really uh, important tool. Uh, one of the things you're not going to see today, but I, what I wanted to mention, and it ties in with one of the th items that's on uh, Mr. Leggett's uh, top six uh, economic uh, development priority list is streamlining developments. We've worked very closely with DPS over the last year, year and a half or so to slash to a fraction of the amount of time it used to take to get a record plat approved. And Rose Krasno, our deputy uh, planning director is here. She's been integrally involved in that, working with Diane Schwartz-Jones and others 
Part of that is a technology issue. We've implemented ePlans, which is an electronic system for filing plans that allows us to move the plans through the process to the different agencies and the different people within those agencies that are responsible for making sure that everything is all according to Hoyle. But it's also about cooperation and it's about the relationships that we have. And I wanted to, the, the main reason I wanted to get up and talk today, and I didn't want to take a lot of your time, but I wanted to say Ike Leggett has been a fantastic partner. We are working together closely on every single economic development issue uh, in the county. And with the county council, I could ask for no better boss than Nancy Florian, chair of the Fed committee, and her colleagues on the county council. We are all absolutely committed not only to attracting and growing business opportunities in Montgomery County, but also to working together collegially, cooperatively towards the common goals of solving problems, figuring out where we have uh, obstacles and where we don't have obstacles, to the point I started with, to making sure that people understand that some of the things that are perceived as barriers to economic development county are not, in fact, uh, based in fact. So I think that uh, I hope you'll. Uh, appreciate the work that went into this tool and see some of the value that it provides, but also to understand that we are in deeply engaged with county government on the full range of economic uh, development opportunities. I'm looking at Pete Fossilman, who's just uh, started work uh, making sure that the White Oak uh, master plan can be implemented. That's another great example. We are uh, deeply engaged with our partners in county government, both uh, the county executive and his team, and also the county council at moving the ball forward for Montgomery County on all of these fronts. Goals was to establish uh, an easy to use uh, d database of projects that uh, we can filter by status or development type. And we wanted to include, add to these things, uh, uh, narratives and photographs of, the, of them. So uh, what you're seeing here is, um, is this, uh, the inventory. Now, we, we, the, on the left, we have a, uh, you can filter it by the residential mixed use, the development type statuses, as well as the, uh, the status of the projects, proposed, approved, or built. Now, uh, this is significant developments. Um, and what that means is that residential units of 10 or greater are, are in this one. And also, when it comes to project built, only projects that have been built within two and a half years are included. This is an automated uh, database which means that, so for instance, when something does become two and a half years old, it will automatically come off of this list. Um, when something is proposed, newly proposed, it will appear on this list with a red icon, as you can see here um, on this little checkbox. Now, uh, right now, everything is checked on. Below the filters, you see this. Um, I'll get rid of the filters for a second. Oops. Wrong one. This is the. Without, with all the filters checked, this is the entire list. Right now, what you're seeing is about uh, 250 projects. And you can see that each one has an icon. One, this one represents a housing location. This one would be retail. All of these coincide with the filters on this little checkbox here, these icons. So for instance, if I remove the commercial icon, or rather, you can see a housing icon here. If I remove the residential icon, you'll see that the list updates and a number of things disappear. So, um, so uh, like many web apps, uh, there's some common things here. For instance, this box here is just a, geo, a geolocator. I could type something like Silver Spring, and it should zoom in to Silver Spring. Not sure if I'm hitting the right button here, but I'll just zoom in manually. So in addition to that, we have a legend. You can see that we have additionally in purple icons that are the local capital projects from the Department of General Services. And you can switch base maps. If we wanted to go in closer and see the uh, high res imagery, we could switch to that. So, and then what happens is you click on a project, and it will bring up a pop-up. And then once you select a project you're interested in looking up more about, you can click the link. 
which will pop open our existing development uh, activity information center, a website at the uh, planning department that has been in existence for roughly 10 years. But to this web page, we have added the database of narratives and photographs from the Montgomery Business Development Corporation that give a, a sense of uh, description to the project. But what's, it's interesting to note, though, that, that it's still it, it's a, it augmenting our existing DAIC website. So it's still able to leverage the, um, I'm sorry, I'm touch pads a little touchy for me here, but um, it, we still have the existing documents. The site plans are still visible. The approval information is, is here. The contact information for uh, the developer and the owners are here, as well as the um, other associated plan types. Lastly, I'll just show that um, there are, like I mentioned, the uh, general services neighborhood projects. And so those are here as well. And you can open up that page, and that will open up to the information regarding to some of our other capital projects, like the Silver Spring Library. And that's updated by uh, the general services. So I think this will help aid the, uh, the economic, develop economic uh, development and uh, uh, developer communities. And, um, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The assumption that there is less of an opportunity availability in Montgomery County for projects and where they could be located. Uh, for example, now there's a great deal of discussion around the county about location in places where there is transit, uh, the uh, lifestyle that many young people want today. And we can show uh, by the database that there are great opportunities around. And we can identify those without people ever even coming to Montgomery County to look at them first because they can use the technology to make that determination we are able to do so. On workforce, um, it is a challenge because, as you know, we have a wonderful school system here, wonderful colleges. Uh, we want to make sure that we retain the people that we are training, but we want to train them for the jobs that are relevant for the future and train them for the jobs which our employers are looking to fill now and in the foreseeable future. By realigning all of this together much more closely, with the private sector, I think that we can provide the training, uh, we can provide the education that they need, and ensure that we have the workforce uh, to respond to this changing economy. Keep in mind that a great part of what we've had in the past in this area has been a great reliance upon the federal government. And as you know, the federal government's jobs have not grown as rapidly as we would like to see, and therefore we must change in order to ensure that we uh, have the jobs in the private sector and the people training well for those. Are you talking about vocational It's really all of the above. Working with our colleges, uh, working with some of the employers, uh, that we will have all of those things prepared and ready in order to meet the needs of the workforce for the future. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Down here. You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus.